All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to week 27, the admin show. This is uh, Jeff Reese, Smiling Goats, along with the venerable Scott Doily. Yeah, Scott Doily, venerable. And, uh, of course, filling in for uh, for Tim is uh, Mr. G-Dog, Jeff Brown, all the way from across the pond. How you doing, G-Dog? Hello, hello. We also have our very special guest tonight, the one, the only, fellow Marylander, Mr. Matt Fritch. How you doing, Matt? Good. How about yourself? Doing great. Doing great. Glad to have you. Yep. Thanks for thanks for having me. All right. So we are. Uh, time. Yeah, we're <laughs> we are playing. What's it called again? Hoback short game course. That the uh, name of it? Yeah, yeah. It is. It's so, a little pitch and putt, kind of a warm up round. Tough little tracks. Test your uh, flops and your just from different areas. So a little pitch and pitch and putt course here, huh? So we're gonna try and uh, see what we can do. Good luck with your tempos, boys. Get your flippy floppy on. Look, this is in the hole. Oh. Oi. Good shot, partner. Hold on. There we go. I guess all I want are tap ins all day. Oh, look at this. All guy. right. A shot. Uh, down, the, down the bank. Come on. Look at that. Nice. Yeah. Nice shot. All right, so it looks like it looks like the stream has worked itself out. I'm not sure what was going on. Yeah, we're just playing uh, alt shot. We're not uh, we're not in a society event at the moment. This is by pretty quick. Oh, what do you do? Do. Uh, I don't know, G Dog. Are you still up or back up? That's... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't oh. know whether you took a nap oh, or no. not. Still up. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. G Dog's very gracious with his time. Is this the right play? Should have done that. Yep. Nice one, Matt. Thank you. Interesting. I need a win on there. Always stick to the ground if you can. <laughs> Doily of all people should know that one. Well, that was brutal. That was way off on that one. Well, uh, we'll give this home. Yeah, I figured we had to go for it. You're almost there. You're almost there. What's a triple bogey coming up? Take a double. Oi. Well done. Make that a habit. Next. Next. All right. <laughs> Too many things going on. Everything's happening. Oh, it's a par three. I like par threes. Uh, no, you can fire away with questions. We're we're uh, ready. Always and, ready for questions. I know we're going to talk some fair play tonight because I promised we would do that. But I'm waiting to see if uh, Mr. Road shows up since he's the one that wanted to hear it. So I'm going to hold off on fair play for the moment, but we'll get to Good it. Shot. If uh, you have a question otherwise, we'd love to. Love to hear it. Did you do a partial G dog? No. Yeah. Full shot. Full shot. Fully left it. Uh oh, yeah. that's what I did too. I probably should have waited. You said that before I swung. I'd have known not to fully <laughs> loft.
He could just lie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I totally partialed that. Give it a oh, go. That's a great question. <laughs> um, a great putt. Hey, look at, looks like my round four putt. It's never left me. All right. Oh, it's Vlad's the star of the show oh, right God, now. That was terrible. Has everyone read the Vlad thread in the forums? Yeah, Sorry, apparently, Jeff. apparently, I thought Matt Fritch was the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> apparently, it's Vlad the Myrtle. I didn't know. Sorry, Matt, you've been bumped out. I didn't Vlad know that. Now... I thought, I thought, I thought Matt Fritch was the guy who was known to be the nicest guy in TGC tours, but there's a anyone whole... who says that obviously doesn't know me very but well. There's a whole thread about Vlad the Myrtle, so. I don't, I don't remember the Matt Fritch thread. So where's this one go? Toy lane. Hey, listen. Short game's not exactly uh, my strong points here. That's why I like this course. Fight. Oh, why did yours stop? Mine did. Well, well, so yours yours kicked. Or yours went left, I thought. I like that red slope. Yeah, I, I hit it full, I lofted it up a little bit, and then I got a slow follow through, so that might have played with the distance as well. Oh, that looks good. Back. This Oi! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come there we go. Nothing but bombs. Yeah, well, 80 foot worth of putts made already. Yeah, I can't compete with that. A little bunker shot without the bunker uh, percentages. It's off the percent still. Yeah, so there's almost no point in there. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, Terry nailed it. I'm usually nice, but I have a, uh, you know, I'm also famous for my rants. You, get, you know, oh, did that nick the stick? I like that. Come on, G-Dog, let's see a, uh, I want to see a punch shot. <laughs> oh, four iron punch. What's that? Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, no. We're going to get interesting. It's a testy little putt. There it is. Dope. Oh, dope. Had, had to make up for missing the other one. Jeff uh, Goats, how much did you miss the cut by? I haven't even looked. I haven't even looked, looked since you shot. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a nasty putt. Yeah, don't yeah. miss left. Oh, and I get to do it too. Nice. Against Doily, who has uh, <laughs> made 80 feet of putts. Don't miss left. Ooh, that's solid. Right. Good luck, good luck. Ooh, he's going for it. Hole in one. Oh, there it goes. Good Missing left. Nurse. Oh, no. Uh, Risk to play. Doily's missed so high that I thought I could just scoot in a little bit and end up just around the hole. A little aggressive, I think. Uh, Good effort. Oh. <clears throat> Anyone got that uh, clip handy of Tim last week? We should throw that in every five minutes. <laughs> Uh, I thought I'm about that, the didn't I? Um, yeah, I ran out I of uh, <laughs> ran out of time, but I was planning on queuing that up. So next week is the PGA Championship. Got any news about that, Scott? Anything you want to say? Uh, lighter. 
Yeah, so next week, all you people, so all the PGA players, um, blast this email to all you, because I know a lot of you don't frequent the forums or watch our show. But we're using the LiDAR version of Bethpage after extensive testing. Uh-oh. 99.9% yep. .9 positive. So we're going to go with our first LiDAR course. So take a while to load, so these on, cause, on the console. Fire up the game and put it on and then go grab yourself a warm bath or something. <laughs> Come back when it's ready. But yeah. Um, we'll grab a couple guys out of the qualifying events this week. You guys have at it. It'll be a full field this time. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Just to see how it plays, and I think we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna play that course next, just to uh, kind of hammer it. Well, let's give this a shot. Oh. Hey. <laughs> oh, and that's very gone. I didn't think it was going to go quite that far afterwards. Alright, let's just... Let's see. Of course, yeah, obviously this is just going in anyway, so it doesn't matter. Ran out of juice. And then we'll just kind of see how this LiDAR experiment goes. I'm a little, uh... I'm Kind of hesitant to use it on anything CC. So many players. So now, if we ever do lighter, mm. it'll only be on the top three tours, just because there's less people. Um, not like it matters, but it's still sad. <laughs> we have actually just ranged it there, lighter for CC. Oh. Which one? I mean, just as far as difficult um, goes. Dolphin think. Highlands, you know, Eric's one. Uh, I'll talk to those guys. You know, since they're obviously based on real life courses, they're they're going to tend to be shorter for the uh, TGC Tour spectrum and kind of on the easier side. So it, it makes sense that, I mean, they're probably a better fit for CC, honestly. Yeah, the courses themselves. It's Some of them are. Yeah. The yeah. technical part of it, though, where they crash mm -hmm. Xboxes will happen more with 700 players playing instead of 150. Gotcha. I that's wish crazy. I had this T-shirt. I don't know if I want this T-shirt. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. You don't like these shots, and I do. Uh, so I, just I wish this. That's probably going to roll off the green. I didn't know whether to go partial or try to hit actually perfect, perfect tempo, which I could never do on pitch shot. Flop shots. I got a slow, so we'll see. Oh, that's way oh, better. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's what we need. Yeah. Seriously, I mean, considering I've I've blown what two or three holes so far, gotta make up one in there. Get in the hole. Oh come on. Atta boy. <laughs> oh come on. Put that in the perfect spot. Ridiculous. I only I can put like this in my official rounds. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Completely you're burning way. edges. You're crushing them right in the center of the cup. <laughs> Love the spot. This Got some goats. Love it. I do not want to be short I here. Never hit, I never hit this shot properly when I played it, so best you do this one. Oh, and it's gonna hit the stick. Nice. You're on the right tier, at least. I'm always about 30 feet short. Yeah, I thought about... I mean, if, if I'd had that shot on a flat green, I would have loft it, but because of the... because of the uh, tier there, I was like, I'm not going to loft. I just want to be long. This is what I always do, right here. Ah, uh, no! <laughs> Every time I play this hole, I do that. <laughs> oh, well. That looked good in the air. Yeah, good shot. Glad I hit red. Get a little downhill or don't go long. Oh, 
So right after the uh, PGA Championship, like it's like a week later maybe that the uh, U.S. Open qualifying starts. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So for those, we're going to pull uh, some of the courses from the U.S. Open contest. So that's why they haven't been filled in just yet. Just need results out before we snag a couple. And those are going to be open to everyone other than PGA players, correct? Correct. Everyone. Same. Web players, Euro players, all of CC. Obviously not the Kinder Club or TST. <laughs> the rest of them open season there'll be three of them so if you don't make it the first week there'll be another one the week after following that so three cracks at qualifying for the u.s open um uh, spin <clears throat> spin good shot that's Ooh. a good one Those three qualifying I'll events. Go will, in. Oh, they'll yeah. be in the special events, so you guys can play your regular tour events and uh, hop over and play that one at the same time. So, lots Good of extra time. golf available for everybody coming up shortly. And, um, the only main thing to remember is that in these qualifying events, you can play them with pro clubs. That'll be mainly for fun. The only way to actually qualify for the Masters. Or for the sorry the the major, be using the master. Club. Oh, we got a little chip here. This is our one. Go in. Oh. Bye bye. Oh no, that's perfect. Mm. Yeah. So, totally tell us. I, I know you people who follow the forums probably already know, but talk a little bit about the uh, changes coming up to the challenge circuit mm. promotion oh. promotion logic. Yes. So, um, a I've been promised Get in. that this is going to be in effect before <laughs> I finalize this week. So this is probably going to affect the current week we're on but we're switching up our promotion logic on all challenge circuit flights same. nice save so it's currently on the challenge circuit if you finish in the top 20 plus ties you would get a promotion mark and that is regardless of club set used what we're switching to for ccb through CCZ, we're going to split it 10 and 10. So you're going to have 10 spots for pro clubs and 10 spots for master clubs, plus ties on both of those. So technically, I think there's actually going to be more spots available. It's all said and done between these two than it was before. There's going to be ties on both ends. But yeah. that's for uh, that's for B through Z. So you now, basically, if you're a master club user, you're not competing against the guys on pro clubs you're more competing against your master club guys for spots and then for cc oh wait for this hole in one then i'll finish <laughs> oh come oh, on we called that no shot. so then on cca it's 15 <laughs> master clubs even break stride come on five pro clubs that okay, was somebody clip that that was well done <laughs> That was really well done. <laughs> How do you compete with that? That's just, that's stupid. Sure, mine doesn't bounce nice. Good shot. <laughs> can't, down, can't complain you about losing to that. Down, you put that on your show? Yeah, it could be an honorable mention, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Give me an if only ball. for calling it in advance. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, let me stop talking ace and then just picks up where he left off. Yeah. 
the uh, CCA guys are 15 and 5. So we're basically prioritizing master clubs on CCA now. We're getting a lot of pro guys being forced up to web and switching to master clubs. And uh, while that's not ideal, we're trying to come up with a way to oh, that's so good. balance it a little better. So if you're oh, a pro club so user that, that doesn't want to use master clubs, you're going to have a little harder time getting up there. I didn't want to go 20 and 0, so I know some people suggested why not just not give pro guys no uh, promotion marks, but... I think it's a solid compromise. I'd rather kind of go this way and be a little conservative, and then if need be, we adjust or tweak further, but... Plus it means that you, you're not going to have like a, a group of guys who kind of sit in CCA and... And just win every week with pro clubs and don't move up. Yeah. And now, yeah, one other thing about the CCA, too, is I, I we're going to, assuming Tim's able to pull this off, he says he can, but we're going to change it so that if you win CCA on pro clubs, you don't auto-promote up to web. You'll just get your two promotion marks and stay on CCA. Unless that win gives you five or more promotion marks, then you can go up. So it'll give you, basically, it's slowing down the, the pro club users. Most of them are kind of topped out at CCA and once they get up to the web they get out of their comfort zone and they lose enjoyment we're trying to prevent people from getting a little too frustrated sit ball Vlad, I'm not understanding the question. Um, maybe rephrase it. I'm not quite getting it. What would happen if... But, like, I think it wouldn't ever happen. But what if the top ten... Like, say the, the, the best Master Club player is in, like, 70th place. That would never happen, right? That's what he's... What if Masters went into the demotion territory? So, like, oh. yeah, I don't think that'll ever happen, Vlad, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, we've had the top Masters club players being in, like, the teens and 20s, but it's a little more... Oh, good putt. Bim. It's a little more evenly spread these days, I think. Where... Like, there's maybe a, one or two guys in the top ten with Masters. I got actually. you. I got you. I follow now. So I don't <clears> think <throat> that'll be an issue. No, I don't either. And I also, because I think with the new logic, I think you'll see more people who prefer to play with Masters go back to playing oh, with absolutely. Masters. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think you actively have people now in CCA. You use pro clubs because that's better. Like yeah. they'll switch down to pro to try and get. As it sits now, if you, if you use master clubs and CCA, it's nearly impossible to get promotion mark. Unless yeah. you're just really, really good. I mean, I know you need to be good to make it up to web, but I thought it was just a little. You know, like you're you're fighting an uphill battle from the start, if you, unless you switch down to pro. So I think that motivated a lot of people to switch to pro because it's the only way to really compete at the top there. Yeah, and that's not ideal, really. To be honest with you, so that's why we're making this yeah tweak mid season. So that. But it's just yeah, it's 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 hard to balance for the uh, like the difficulty levels in game. Turn. Like, I think it's definitely less balanced than two. Anyways, that's uh, that's the plan for this week, so. Ooh, and all of a sudden we're right back in it. Three in a row. <laughs> we're done here, Jeff. Probably all me, ever since that hole in one I've fallen apart. <laughs> <laughs> ever since I aced it. <laughs> I've been paying attention. Got distracted by all the words I was using. It's always downhill after you call your ace. Put this one. Well, actually, this is easier pin. Pin two, it's down that little gully. It's a little chart. 
<laughs> That's funny, Tom. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag justice for Dontrell. That's a good putt. That's a tough putt. You gotta really ride that fringe. Trying to make it. Nice putt. So, G Dog, if you were to have an alias, what would it be? Uh, I don't know. Oh, good answer. Lord Roche. Lord, Lord Roche. Roche. <laughs> <laughs> That'd get rejected. Yeah. Oh. If you want Barbara Roche, you can have that. <laughs> Barbara Barbara. <laughs> That's his first and last name. Play out boom boom a take. <laughs> Is boom boom not an acceptable tour name? Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> mm. oh, I like that this shot. Good. Sit ball. Nice. Let's get back that one up. Ooh. Doofus A McGillicuddy or Dam for short. How about doilies a machine? It's your damn there. Oh, Boom. Ooh, <laughs> that one made me nervous. Better not miss this one now. <laughs> All comes down to 18. We got like here. here. Tight one. You gotta have the goats and the moose. Some kind of cult over there. <laughs> you could say that. It needs more squirrels. Oh, there's the squirrels. They're in front. Yeah, they're in front watching. Oh, get up. Oh, oh it, it bit. Come on. The war's open. Uh, my worst distance, too. I'm sorry. I just thought the the pitching wedge flop was gonna be way too far. I clubbed up and lo or clubbed down and lost it down, figuring that that would do it. It wasn't even close. Well, I got pitcher drawn. Nice. Or you could just hold out. Ah. Ooh. It's a good effort. There's no guarantee I'm making this putt, so. Oh, you've been draining everything. Imagine you're on tour. It's the 18th hole. This <laughs> <laughs> is to make the cut. <laughs> oh, oh no. Well done. <laughs> well earned. That's a win for the good guys. <laughs> Are we the baddies? <laughs> what? <laughs> win for me, that was a fun one. Yeah, like I say, that's a good little course for everyone who's struggling with their short game. Look at that. Not nine of ten putts made. If only I could do that when I wanted to. Look, look at mine. Five of twelve. <laughs> Five of twelve. <laughs> <laughs> and you started off so hot. That's why I just put it in the hole. I didn't want to putt. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're doing uh, Beth Page next, correct? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Terry's doodles today were hilarious. Uh, we'll have to see if he, uh, if he uh, can shore those up into like one photo or something. Wow. There's a lot of Beth Pages. I feel your pain having having to sit through all sorts of just random uh, uh, pointless training meetings. 
Do I need to search Beth Page LiDAR because it didn't show up? No, just Beth no, Page. It's, it's PGA Beth Page 19. PGA 19. Yeah. Oh. It was the I had, first one. I had it then. I had yeah. It. Okay. G Dog, you just dropped a 2 and 7. No. <laughs> to be fair, that's my fault. I gave away like four holes. Are, are we going to be all right with very Including fast greens? Including the last one. Yeah, we yeah. very fast. Yeah. Not, not hey, good night, bad. Eric. Too bad. I didn't see you hey, here. man, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> that was a joke. Hi, Eric. Go Raptors. <laughs> What oh, pin we doing? Lobbered. Ah, uh, whatever. Same teams or different teams? Uh, you gotta say same teams. What? What's the? Uh, which pin do you want? Uh, I don't know. Go three. Pin three. The ever popular uh, pin three. Nobody ever plays pin three. That's why we play. It. No one's used to it. <sighs> <laughs> G, G Dog and I even match. We've got the same shirt. Yeah. Just different team uniforms. Sorry, Eric. Okay. You should have been on the show tonight. Of course, we'd have just picked on you live. That's all. <laughs> we should pick on Tim because he's mm. fun to pick on too. You guys even upgraded damn members and everything. All right, let's get the drivers out, boys. Yep, got to hit the big stick on this course. Unless you want to go uh, no drivers and punch shots. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Two iron uh, stairs all day. 7,400 yards, I think we're going to need the driver. <laughs> go right, Matt. Cut in the corner. Not it's enough, I don't, right. not enough, I don't think. Oh, Ooh. no. It's all right. Scott, oh Scott is used to hitting out of the heavy stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically hit better out of that than I do out of the fairway. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess Mr. Road isn't showing up tonight, so I think we'll just have to bridge the topic without him. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, dear. Everyone buckle up. <laughs> so for those of you who... Uh, frequent the forums you'll know that it's it's been asked many times you know when people fail fair play multiple times there should be some type of penalty for those people and you know it keeps it keeps getting brought up and and we understand like we we hear it we understand we, i think to understand why there is not a penalty you have to kind of go back to the origin of fair play and the idea was, you know, we, we just wanted to remove the scores and not count them if they if they didn't pass our metrics. And, you know, although we don't even treat it as a DQ, so we treat it as like a withdrawal. So there's really not a big penalty. It's just – and the reason for that is most people uh, that get flagged by fair play are, you know – doing so innocently like they're not knowing what they're doing i mean we get a lot of q school people for example who play with a third party controller because they haven't read the rules um that kind of stuff um but it oh i over read that one i didn't even hit that that hard um but the thing is is like on the pga you've got the top players right and and then you've got people who are typically near the top of the leaderboard that have been flagged multiple times. And so, yeah, we hear, we definitely hear the concern, you know, why, why are these people not making any changes? They just go on about playing the way they play. And some weeks they skirt by the API and they don't get flagged and they're going to, they're going to get a top 10 and, you know, we're losing out positions to these people who clearly are right on the edge. So I'll get back to that in a minute, but, that's the concern. And, and so first of all, I guess I just want to say, like, we understand the concern. We hear the concern. 
the reason we haven't done anything about it quicker is mostly logistical. Um, we don't have a method of tracking how many times someone has been pulled unless we go back and look manually through each and every week and then you know log that information into a spreadsheet Thanks, which we yeah. we haven't done um so we're waiting tim is working on trying to get that built out for us to where it will you know give us that information without us having to track it manually so like that's the first thing like just logistically seeing who it applies to is the first hurdle and we don't have that built out and yeah we could go back and perhaps manually do it but you you know it's something then that we would have to be doing on a consistent basis every week and we just we don't need the additional work at the moment so tim is working on building something out that will track it for us we just don't we haven't gotten there yet um you know otherwise logistically you know the thing i guess the thing is is like it's bad enough and it, it is these same people like the, the the people that that get pulled multiple times those are the ones that are the hardest to deal with in the fair play forums you know they're the ones that that will give us the hardest time and you know they insist they're not doing anything wrong and you know, in some ways I sympathize with them because most of the times it's, you know, it, it is them short swinging, which shouldn't be part of the game, and it is, but that's what's causing them their issue. Um, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate because it's a part of the game, and it's a part of the game that, that we wish wasn't there but is, and, you know, if... You know, if it wasn't, things would be a lot more black and white. There's a shot. Should they have to change their swing? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't really want to be in the position of having to dictate how somebody swings in this game, but because the short swing generates the data that it does, oh. it doesn't, you know, not finishing the swing and getting, you know, getting these shorter lines on the feedback meter, they have a dramatic effect. Like the end of the swing is weighted heavier in this game, I and mean, we know that from the developer's mouth, we know that the end of the swing determines direction more than any other part of the swing. There are multiple parts that are weighted differently, but the end determines direction more than anything else. If you're not finishing, guess guess where your ball is going to go? It's going to go straight. That's a, you know, in my opinion, that's a flaw in the game design. But. You know, HB's already spoken about it, and they said, if you figured out how to do it and you can do it, then go for it. That's not our position. Our position is different. Our position is, you know, if you're a short swing, you're fine as long as you're passing our data checks. But if you're not passing our data checks, then you have to change your swing. That's that's our position. Yeah, it's not even like, uh, to answer that question, we can't tell from the data uh, whether it's a short swing or not a short swing. The only thing we can tell is the, you know, the accuracy value that's generated that determines the, basically the line of the swing before other ex external ex things affect it, like tempo, lie, wind, etc. So basically how uh, the accuracy value is how accurate you were with your swing, both backwards and forwards. And um, and what happens when people aren't finishing their swings, my theory on it anyway, is you're letting go of the controller early. The springs in the controller are obviously going to recenter the... Uh, whatever deviation you had in your in your physical swing like it, it, you know if you let go of your stick it's automatically going to go back to center that's what happens so if that's what you're doing at the end of your swing then the the springs are pushing that stick back to center 
And so the very last point of measurement that the – I'm sorry, Scott. That was terrible. The very the very, uh, very last point of the uh, swing that the game's going to measure is going to be in the center because that's where the springs return the stick to. And so what happens is as people are short swinging over and over again, basically their, their swings are all ending up in the exact same spot because the controller is putting the stick – back in the same spot. And so the accuracy values are all clustered together as if there's no variation whatsoever. And that's why you see when we post the charts, most people, normal people, have multiple colors all across that chart. Short swingers have like, you know, eight to nine bars on that chart, which are all grouped together, typically all in the orange zones. And that's you know, that's not all that different than, you know, what we saw from people who were using third-party devices and stuff like that. Like, you, you can't really tell the difference. So it's very difficult to, to police. Uh, that's a great shot from there. Thank yeah. You. Yep. Good job, Scott. One or the other, you know. So, like, we don't know. We, it's hard to tell one, one from the next. Like, are they a short swinger? Or are they just a cheater? We, we can't tell the difference. And that's the problem that we have. Um, but that's all like, that's all a, uh, a, a it's a, I don't know. Well, if, if you're not a short swinger, the odds of you being able to do full swings across an entire round and end up in the exact same area is pretty much nil. So when these charts come up, it's very easy to, there's a very distinct pattern. And generally speaking, it's always on a certain platform because it's hard to do that swing on Xbox or on Steam. Yeah, I, I should I should post them. I, I don't have his permission, but I, I don't know. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me even saying it. But if you were to see the difference, Mark Cram... Plays on PS4. Mark Custard. Mark Custard. I'm sorry. Cram. Cram is his. Yeah, Cram is his gamer tag. Okay. Gamer tag. Yeah. Uh, Mark Custard. He he got flagged a few weeks ago, and he was short swinging, and he had the same little grouping. You know, I think his was even maybe like six or seven bars when on the week he got flagged on that chart, and they were they're all grouped together, extremely tight. So he, you know, he said. He admitted, you know, when we were in the fair play assistance thread, you know, hey, yeah, we're, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a short swinger. I, you know, I know that's what I've been doing. So he said, you know, let me play, let me try and play some full rounds. So he practiced for a while, hitting full rounds. He and he started playing some events. You should see the difference in his chart. His chart looks like the normal chart with colors all over the bars now. Same guy, same controller just a different swing. Like he's taking full swings like the rest of us do. Um, so like it absolutely makes an absolute, I mean, it's, it's a huge difference. It's crazy, the difference. But anyway. Sorry, I'm playing so horrendously bad this game. Oh, good. Uh, it's good. It's fine. It's fine. It's not like there's an ongoing talent I want to. <laughs> it's fine. So, um, anyway, all that said, I mean, I've said enough about short swinging, but, you know, the big reasons, well, that was a, just a look at that putt go. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the, beyond the logistical reasons of, you know, of, of not creating some type of penalty, there are more logistical reasons. So like, we're not like our system isn't set up to very well to handle suspensions. Like that's something we have to enforce manually. We have to like remove someone's tour card for a period of time and then remember to give it to them back when their suspension is up. So we don't have like a suspension system built into the, to the site. We also like the one thing we really can't do at all because it would screw things up even worse is we can't penalize FedEx points or money or WGR ranking because those things, there's no mechanism to adjust those things, and we really don't even want to mess with that. 
So like determining what punishment to issue is also a logistical nightmare. Like we don't, you know, the suspension thing is probably the easiest one, but again, that just means we have to manually, manually do it. Um, doing some quick math in my head, sorry. So, yeah, when you hear us say use that short swing at your own risk, this is basically why. And then when we get a new person who has an issue with this and it's their first time getting flagged and they come in all in a rage, they have to remember that this is our 150th time going over the same thing with a new person. Yeah. Very slow. So our patience is fairly short. And if they come in like a bull in a china shop, we generally just move on. You don't deal with those people anymore. We're all help. We're happy to help. And Jeff's I think like does the bulk of it, but you gotta come in wanting to work with us. We're yeah. more than happy to work through anything. Figure out what's going on. He's saying, "Don't be a jerk." <laughs> Good putt. Oh, I oh, think that. Good back. effort. I think the other thing that I just want to say is like beyond the logistical reasons for not implementing, you know, repeat offender punishments. There's also like, I mean, I think there's some philosophical like reasons for not doing so because like I, I do get it. I do get, and I can make, I can make the argument that everybody's been making. I, I can absolutely make that argument. And I, and I actually agree with it, you know, but on the other hand, I don't agree with it because if a person, you know, if a, just because a person's been flagged numerous times, like let's say they're, you know, like what's the difference between a person who gets flagged, let's say three times, but in his other 40 rounds in a season, he passed our API check. Then the guy who, then the guy who's like, let's say, let's just, I'm going to throw out a complete hypothetical. Let's say there's a guy who's actually cheating. Let's say he's using some sort of, you know, device like a Cronus device to constrain his swing. And he gets flagged one time and knows where the, then he knows, okay, well, I went too far. He dials it back and never fails our API again. Like that guy's legitimately cheating week to week and we can't catch him because we don't know better, right? Those are the guys that concern me more. Are the guys that are like right on the border every week and you know never get caught. Then the guy, like the guys who are getting caught three and four times, I know they're not cheating. Like they're not. Other, you know, they're just short swinging. You know, so like I can make that argument too in a way. Like I can also say, you know, hey, um, I. I, I I guess my point is, I'm like, I'm not, I'd, I'd rather, like, at least when we're doing it round by round, we're, we're almost validating that the round was at least to our standard. Like, is it more nefarious, I guess, to, to be flagged a few times than to be right on the edge and never get flagged? And then how do you define right on the edge, you know? So like it gets muddy philosophically. I'm not saying, you know, I don't know if I'm explaining what I'm trying to say correctly, but, um, but yeah. Scott, you got anything to say on that? <clears throat> Yeah, what you oh, said. Sweet. Yeah, what I said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm more... I think people... Well, hey, I think there's... The people that are in the forums are well-versed. You, you'll see it in there. People start talking. The guys that are getting flagged before are the ones doing most of the support for the people that are new to getting flagged. So, I think people that are new to getting flagged think that they're, everyone's first reaction is that we're calling them cheaters, which you're not. 
and then they think everyone else on the tour is going to think they're cheaters, which everyone, I think, has been educated enough to know that that is 95% of the chance not the case. So I just want people to know that if you're getting flagged, you know, it's not the end of the world. We can fix it. And I, I also, like, go back to my point that I've made many times in the past is that there is an there is 110 percent absolutely a variation in difficulty from controller to controller and that difficulty can change over time as that controller wears i've seen people with brand new controllers that were just locked in stiff and didn't pass fair play Mm -hmm. Um, i've seen people with defective stock controllers i had we had a guy a couple weeks ago had two controllers one of them, it basically hit the same two lines of the chart every time. His other controller, he played played two rounds with one controller and two rounds with the other. Well, the, the two rounds that got flagged, he didn't know. Like he was like, which controller, which controller got flagged because he didn't remember which one he played which with. And we had to have him play test rounds to identify. Both were stock controllers. Both were bought at the same time, with the same you know at the same place. But one was just, I guess, defective because it. It didn't. It wouldn't pass, no matter what he did. So the the variation in controllers is also something that contributes to how well someone plays versus, you know, someone else. Yeah, like if you're, say, some guy out in Vancouver with a red controller that basically. <laughs> uh, uh... Oh, sorry, Andre's in the chat. Sorry, Andre. Sorry. Your control is red. Throw it out. That's my. That's our basically our newest rule. He's joking. I am joking. He's Sorry. joking. Oi! Don't besmirch the good name that is the Canuck. I switched oh. to black. I know. <laughs> I saw it the last stream. He retired the red one. He'll be back. It'll be back. <laughs> I gotta say, I rather like the course so far. It feels pretty spot on. I would hope so. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, to, you would expect it to be pretty spot on because it's, you know, laser measured. Whether you actually like like the course itself or not, the lidar version is, for all intents and purposes, as accurate as we're probably going to see in this game. So, mm-hmm. makes sense to. Uh, at least attempt to use it for the major. See what people shoot. I'm sure they'll hit the winners will be in the high 40s or low 50s. Yeah, I mean it's one of those. On that, but yeah, at least you'll probably... be playing the actual course. And it seems to have a bit of teeth, at least. I think. It's definitely not easy, but it's it's going to be hard making a real life course play hard in this game. Simply because of you know. You're so perfect compared to what anyone could do in real life. <laughs> okay, then. I think that's always like the like the the challenge for a golf game developer is that like if you were to make the golf game be as difficult as golf is in real life people would hate it people would absolutely hate it i mean scott would love it but everybody else would hate it i would love it you know like people don't enjoy playing you know and watching the ball roll down the hill like that like they don't well (laughs) see the thing is is that that's not where you should put the difficulty put the difficulty in just needing almost utter perfection to hit a pinpoint drive where you're aiming kind of thing whereas everything else off of perfect various degrees of whatever start spraying the ball around same with all the shots like basically they did pretty much what I hope they'd do with this game at least for me was put me further away from the pin on my approach shots and like putting from this distance 
is kind of the norm in this game for me and was mm -hmm. like a rarity in TGC1. Pretty much every TGC1 green, I would be inside 10 feet. And that was my biggest gripe between those. That and even the second game was kind of the same. So it just all depends on how they get you to that point. <laughs> but I think, uh, like, I don't see people lining up to buy a baseball game where the scores are 32 28 all the time. Like, ideally, you want the scores to be closer to golf than further. Uh, to me, they're not quite there, but it's definitely a step in the right direction for, I'd say, 90% of the playing base. Most of us on the tours, if you look at all the tour scores, if you're on Master Clubs at least, most of the scores are probably 25 to 35 under range, which is too far off what real life scores are for the high end. But I think if everyone, I think the frustrating part comes when somebody's shooting 50 under and you're shooting 20 under. I think if everyone was shooting like 15 under and you were shooting 5 under, you wouldn't be nearly as frustrated, even though you're shooting only 5 under. I think it's just because you can see what other people are doing. That's where the frustration comes. I don't know if you'd want to play a golf game where you're shooting 85 all the time. You can get a happy medium between 65 and 75. I think great. And I think right now we're closer to 72, 62. But maybe there's maybe there's an innovation that could get us there. You know, this green grid. Maybe they can do it where you get. 15 uses in a, an event or something. So you actually have to save some or use them in s certain spots or it only shows up for two seconds. So you only get a quick look at the exact line. The rest of it you have to do on your own. There's got to be something that they can do. Maybe there's a different type of way to read a green that we haven't even seen yet. Where cause I think the putting stats are still a little on the not normal. Everyone's putting's a little better than PGA. I think most PGA putters are around 1.75 or 1.8, if I recall. Well, I mean, I definitely think, like what you said originally, is more correct than anything else. Like, if you look at the one of the statistics we get via the API is called it's called yaw error, and basically what it is is it's, it's a measurement in degrees. So, like, if your aiming point is at you know, straight ahead, it measures how many degrees off of that your swing went, and that's based on your accuracy value, and then, you know, if you hit a bad tempo or something like that, it amplifies your, uh, you know, whatever whatever mistake you made, it gets amplified. So the measurement in degrees of, of how far off your shot ended up being, like for most players, that number is way too small compared to real life. Like, you know, like I, I think like the average, like, you know, the average player is far, far less than one degree. I mean, as a median on their, you know, on their shot. So like in real life, you, you would never, I mean, even the best players are going to be off by more than a degree. I'm, you know? uh, I'm probably around 25 degrees in my real life. <laughs> be 45. I mean, yeah, I mean, seriously, you know, like, I bet you if you were to measure it, you, you know, it would, double digits wouldn't surprise me for sure. Yeah. I mean, most. Imagine Mark Foley with a 15 degree yaw going on out there. Amazing to watch. That would be a, a R rated thread for sure. <laughs> this this might be a quick uh yeah we may be done early tonight boys yeah, i am playing terribly matt you're welcome anytime you and <laughs> i'm sure it doesn't help i don't think i've actually played Point. this game in a, a week or two <laughs> like, i got up for this 
<laughs> Alright, bro, get the bed ready. Going early. Waiting on you, G Dog. He's protesting. <laughs> so I just I just happened to pull it up, Doyle. You your y'all median in the PGA event, you only played one round, was uh zero point eight. And that's what sorry? Your your y'all error. Zero point eight. So less oh, less than a, a degree. Wow. But I mean there's plenty of players who are far tighter than that. Tell me I'm not the best player in the game. Um, I mean there's a lot of that that puts you pretty far down the PGA list, like I would say bottom half. So it just goes to show you, like some people, some people are like, even you know, that, that to me, that's what needs to change to make make the game more realistic. Yeah, I agree. But again, like that has to be like something you only turn on, you know, like if if the general public gets that that game, they're going to just hate it. What they need to do is give you that game, but just allow us to do it properly. Have like a sim setting or something. Yeah, just like sure. a, an above master club setting. It's like, okay, you're not going to go any farther, but it's going to get super hard. Yeah, we don't need more just distance, like, that's for sure. No, we have plenty I'd rather distance. Have less distance. Snipe five or ten yards off. At least the furthest hits. The amount of 360 yard drives I've seen lately. It's just making game. Yeah. It Horses. would be cool to be able to tweak my distances down to like what I hit in real life. Yeah. I always thought it'd be cool if they gave you like uh, on the driving range you could set your own tempo too. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah. And we just have like a, a minute and a max that you have to work in between, but you could, if you're a little faster paced than the next guy, you, as long as you hit your tempo. Just go in, just end it. <laughs> oh, let's try it. What's up, Dale? Wow, that did not break at all. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm never getting invited back now. <laughs> we'll get you back. We'll get you a win yet. No worries. Again. Oh, gee, what, a, what a shot. Look at you. He lights it up in celebration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's all good. I haven't, I haven't played in... Uh, any round outside of just play testing holes on probably two weeks almost. But still weren't very good. Fairways hit two of five. <laughs> two of seven, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh well. Thank you for having me though. Thanks for helping out. Sorry I uh, fell off the cliff there, uh, Jeff. It's all right. It's all right. High level play is not my skill suit. Someone should throw that Tim clip up as our outro. I really want to hear it once at this time tonight. <laughs> Got that on call there, Jeff? Um, I don't have it handy. Oh. oh. There. Oh, that's not it. Cool. No, that was the. What was the oh, that's my one? call shot. Um, yeah, oh, I think I posted it in Slack. I know, but I've, I'm trying to, I'm not on the right computer to be on Slack is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it up. Anyway, I don't see it. Oh, well.
All right. Well, uh, I guess that's it for us this evening. We're a little bit ending a little bit early here tonight because, well, reasons. Because we got our asses kicked. No, we played a short course to start with, so that went fast. And then we works well for me because I'm um, getting tired. Only so played eleven there. holes or something, nine, twelve holes. So right. nice, tight, uh, short admin show so that you can actually watch, uh, get all the information in without getting too. Oh, there it is. G Dog posted it. Everyone yeah, watch, Tom, watch Tom or Fudd. That's the uh, <laughs> that's our outro clip. Um, yeah, that's what you missed tonight when Tim goes to bed early. <laughs> Is he alive? <laughs> he will be missed. That's playing an ad. It's the best sound bite here all year. Missed it. Yeah, so um, anyway, guys, I guess that's going to do it for us for the evening, but, uh, you know. If anybody has any questions about uh, fair play or anything, I know there'll be some people that will watch this after the fact because they were curious. You know, feel free to ask them. We can talk about it again. But um, otherwise, we're looking at a busy couple of weeks. Got the uh, PGA Championship next next week, followed by the U.S. Open qualifying coming up after, right after that. So lots going on, and uh, we'll. Uh, We'll be, be here every week, we think, to uh, to answer any questions about what's going on. Meanwhile, check out all the other TGC Tours TV shows, including the flagship show, What's Going On, which I, is that going to return to Tuesday night next week, Jeff? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. to normal. Back to its normal time slot next week. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Well, for uh, the venerable Scott Doily. Yes, vulnerable Doily. To the, yeah, for the, Don't uh, take advantage of him. He's feeling vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, not vulnerable. Venerable. Uh, to the uh, to the man across the pond, Mr. Jeff Brown, and for the uh, second nicest guy on TGC Tours, Matt Fritch. <laughs> I like that. Hi. I'm Smiley Goats. So have a good